You know, I, one of the statements of Master that deeply impressed me was he said, where most people end their meditation, that's where I begin. And so it's a very interesting thought because there is an ebb and flow in our meditation. Let's say for any particular period, say a half hour meditation. You'll be going very well, and then the mind starts to get diffused or your energy starts to fall. And you think, oh, all right, I'm done now. But when I get to that point, I remember where most people stop. This is where Master began. And so I mentally think, okay, Master, let's pick up at this point. And so if you can catch your, your focus at that point where your energy starts to wane and say, let's put out a little more energy here, you find that you can really have a breakthrough. You'll go deeper than you had gone before. So be very, don't let your meditation kind of dwindle down and then you say, I'm done, I'll get up. End strong. And if you know you have a half hour, that last five minutes say, Master, let's try to find God in these last five minutes. Let's make a supreme effort. And so by working, not just being passive, but taking control of that energy and saying, I will, go, I will make the effort to go deeper. Master said, make every meditation, every day, deeper than the one before. Well, that's a big challenge. I don't think most of us can do that. But we can try. We can try to say, I will put out more energy. I will not let my meditation drift off into subconscious. So watching the rhythms of your meditation is very important to be very sensitive and I remember once, some year, I think it was the very first summer I was at Ananda. Um, maybe it was a year later. But I was, my job at that time was answering letters that were written to the community about Ananda <coughs> and so forth. And we, in those days it was typewriters. And I was not a very accurate typist, so I had, there was something called whiteout. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's yeah. And so I would white out many and then type over and my letters did not look very good. And Swami came in one time and he looked at that and he said, in one of my letters, he said, you cannot send that out looking like that, <laughs> representing Ananda. And it was really helping me to say, don't ever settle and say it's good enough. As long as you say it's good enough, that means it's not good enough. As long, when you say, I've done my best, then it's good enough. And so the same with your meditation. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, as long as you're just thinking, I've, I've done a good enough job. No. Until you really get the feeling, I've made good, focused effort today, then you can say, that's good enough. So, Watching the energy patterns, never becoming passive, making your meditations regular. Don't say, well, today I will, tomorrow I won't. If you do that, you're always trying to make up for <coughs> lost ground. And don't, don't have your meditation be up for choice. Well, today I will, but maybe tomorrow I won't. Make a commitment every day. I will do this, no matter what happens. And if you do that, you'll find that the Guru really supports that. I remember once I was going through a, um, a difficult test in my life, and I made a vow to Master that I would do 108 Kriyas morning and evening till I could get through this period of bad karma. And about nine months had gone by, and I was firm in my vow, and then one day I had Another person and I had to drive to a different city and give a discourse. And we didn't get back. We drove there and back. And we didn't get home till about 3 in the morning. And I was so happy to get home. I just collapsed. And when I was just about to go to sleep, I was just drifting off. And then it was like the, an alarm clock went off. And Master said, you didn't do your cribs. 
And I was so close to the goal, and I just sat right up and I said, thank you, thank you for helping me. And then I didn't break my vow. So if you make a commitment, God will help you to keep that commitment. No matter, and that's, we need to understand that. We're not in this alone. The masters want us to grow spiritually. They want us to feel their presence. And then finally, don't be complacent about feeling master's presence in your life. Again, don't say, oh, you know, he's my guru. I have his picture on the wall, on my altar, I pray to him, read his books. That's not enough. We have to go ever deeper until he becomes a living reality. That's why he came. He didn't come just to stand outside the apartment and wave to us. He came to go in our heart, to come into our hearts. And we have to keep calling to him. I don't know you enough. I'm not, I, you know, I was remembering what Swamiji said once he was, when he was with Master. I was just thinking about this today. And he was praying to Master, let me love you the way you love me. And Master, he didn't say it out loud, he was just praying that inwardly. But Master picked up his thoughts and looked at him and said, how can the cup hold the whole ocean? And so for us, we need to look at the little cup of our devotion and say, not big enough, not big enough, and just keep trying to expand our, the vessel that we fill with divine love. And how do we do that? I, again, complacent. Master said, I don't mind your mistakes, I mind your indifference. And I think indifference is the, the cruelest tool that we have to, to counter our spiritual life. Don't let indifference and complacency take root in your heart. But keep, when you read the autobiography, Master just, I mean, the yearning for God praying till he said he felt his brain would explode. He did that not for himself. He was an avatar. He did that to give us an example of what it takes to find God. And so keep that yearning. Never say, it's enough. I love you enough, God. Until we're one with God, our love, our little cup is too small. So these are things that are not been important in the world. I'll have just a couple of very quick tips. One is the first five minutes of your meditation is very important because it's hard to keep your will focused all the time in a longer meditation. But you can, with strong effort, keep your mind focused for the first five minutes so that if you're going to do the Hong Sa technique or whatever you're focusing your mind on, don't allow your mind to drift for that period of time. Really make an effort. And if you do that, then that will set the direction for the rest of your meditation. The second tip is one that Swamiji often talked about. And he said that meditation, the difference between prayer and meditation is that prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening to God. And too often I've seen devotees who don't stop and quiet the mind and try to listen to God's response. So we do our techniques, we do our prayers, we, it's always active and, and it's as if our mind is always chattering. And then we never stop and listen to God's response. And so, especially in the latter part of your meditation, try not to have techniques, not to have prayers, not to have anything intrude on just quiet receptivity. Listening can also be looking for the light in the forehead. But it's it's the putting yourself in the position of 
receiving God's response rather than constantly saying, why don't you respond? Why don't you respond? I've been meditating. Respond to me. Respond. And just quiet and allow that response. So meditation is listening to God's response.